Hi everybody, it's Tim with Tim Boyer Photography. Today's tutorial is seven tips for better bird photography. And I've done something a little bit different and you'll see that I've included the photo data in the lower part of the screen for each picture. Let me know in the comments section below if you think this is helpful. Tip number one is plan your shot. What we wanna do is figure out where we wanna go, how we're gonna get to a place, what time we need to be there, where the sun's gonna come up, where we need to position ourselves, and where to find birds. So we need to do some planning and some research we need to look at online resources like eBird. And as an example, there's a Western Washington birders group on Facebook, and that can give you ideas of places to go where other people are finding birds. In this slide here, you see there's a Bird Finder's Guide to Washington, and that is actually online now, and it's uh, published by the Washington Ornithological Society. American Birding Association also has bird finding guides for most states. And then you have this map where I've actually numbered six or seven different locations that I intended to photograph around Gray's Harbor for shorebird photography. Tip number two is set your exposure before you leave the car or start walking around. Now grass is 18% gray, so you can always set the exposure for your camera to 18% gray or a medium setting just by finding some green grass. The other thing you can do is take a picture of a white car, and I know this picture looks kind of gray, but it is a white car. I'm not blowing out any of the highlights, and so that's what I want to do. Set your exposure before you leave the car, then you're ready for any action that might happen. Tip number three is check the dials and switches on your camera and your lens before you leave. And as an example, I really would prefer that my lens be on autofocus and not manual focus. And I would really want my stabilization to be on rather than off. Dials and switches get moved while you're taking your camera in and outside of your bag. And I don't know how this happens because you have to push this button down in the center and then rotate the ring on the outside to change this from bulb to manual. But this in my camera bag, somehow it was switched from manual to bulb. And if I hadn't checked it before I started shooting, I would have been very surprised that I had a very long shutter speed when I was trying to take a bird picture. Tip number four is fill the frame and you can see even from my title slides here that the bird is filling about half of the frame. I really think that most of the time the bird should fill about a one third to one half of the frame and you can do that by using more telephoto power. You can use that by getting a little bit closer and then here's an example of a bird that fills about half of the frame, this Merlin. You get the idea that you want to make the bird the main focus of the frame or the image. You want to have some some white space in the image to balance it out and then if you get too close or fill the frame so much like this that it's it seems unbalanced and a little claustrophobic. Tip number five is capture action behavior gesture and story. You can see in the title slide I'm capturing some action and, and this feeding behavior and then the birds raising its foot and there's water falling off of its foot. There's some tension in the bird trying to pull this worm out of the water. There's some natural behavior going on here getting on towards springtime and this uh, crane is saying, hey, look at me. And the other birds kind of, uh, uh, yeah, what's going on there? And so that's how you get gesture or emotion or humor into your images by sometimes capturing images like this. This is a more of a moody kind of an image because several things are going on. A slow shutter speed blurs the wings. The bird is moving from the light into the shadows. There's rim lighting from very harsh side lighting from the sun setting, but it creates kind of a moody image and that can be good in a slideshow or as a demonstration for something. And so we can add these elements of story, gesture, behavior, and action into our pictures. And then gesture, this western grebe had washed up on the beach and then this eagle came in to scavenge it and it grabbed a hold of it and it's kind of looking down. It's like, what is this thing? So there's some gesture, there's some emotion in that image. Tip six is get outside. All weather is good weather. There's no bad weather or good weather. There's just weather. I've taken some memorable images in the middle of snowstorms and you can see the snow streaks going across this image and pretty cool images during the middle of a snowstorm and any kind of weather you can get something and tip number seven is stay grounded anchor all of your pictures with some earth right so get part of the horizon on the bottom of the picture there are some mountains anchoring this picture and the snow geese blasting off up in the air and then here again it anchors the images so that you get a better perspective of what's going on in the image and here's a bonus tip be curious and experiment and one of my first trips to Bosque del Apache we saw these cranes flying by these cornfields at night and so we were experimenting with flash and slow shutter speed and this image didn't use fill flash but it was a 1 20th of a second so that really blurred the wings but I was also panning with them moving the camera as they flew across the corn them and that created the blur in the background. Uh, slow shutter speed and panning just kind of experimenting with those techniques to see what would happen. So here's a slow shutter speed at sunset with western sandpipers and I'm just following the birds as they move up the beach so the waves are blurred and the birds are blurred just because it's a 
pretty slow shutter. So pan blurs really work well to kind of create some different looking evocative images. And then here's a really slow shutter speed, 0.8 seconds. This is a bunch of sandhill cranes at the crane ponds at Bosque del Apache. The sun has gone down. It's into the blue hour here. We're in the shade. But just by doing a slow shutter speed and slightly moving the camera, I've created a different kind of a looking image. And it's blue, and so it's a little bit more moody. And then bonus tip number two is practice, perseverance, and patience. Those are the three Ps of bird photography. Practice at home, changing settings on your camera. Perseverance means waiting until the light gets good, staying that half hour after sunset so that you can get some color in the sky. And patience, you're going to come up on a bird. It's going to be perched. Stay with the bird. Wait till it does something interesting. Wait to do a wing stretch. It will cough up a pellet. It will do something at some point. It will fly away. But wait until you can capture some behavior. So have patience when you're out there doing bird photography because action will come to you if you wait a little bit for it. And as always, if you enjoy what I'm doing with the tutorials, share this with a friend. Give me a like and a subscribe. I would really appreciate that. Remember, you can learn more about bird photography by getting a copy of my book, Learn the Art of Bird Photography. It's available on Amazon. It's a Kindle and a trade paperback. You can also get a signed copy of my book by going to my website, timboyerphotography.com. Hey, thanks a lot. I will see you next week. Bye.